Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stacy. This is going to be a really special video for me. Um, I haven't done anything like this before, but I wanted to make a video for Hobbit Day, which is September 22nd, which is the first day of autumn, and it is also my birthday. So I share a birthday with Bilbo and Frodo Baggins. That's why Hobbit Day is on September 22nd. I believe it's the very first page of Lord of the Rings. It talks about the birthday party and that the birthday party is on September 22nd. I have to say, I was so excited when I read that book for the first time to see my birthday listed in there and to know that I shared it with the Hobbits. Very exciting stuff. So I wanted to do a video um, for Hobbit Day. So I was thinking it would be fun to do a list of books that if you love The Hobbit or The Lord of the Rings, try these books. You might like these also. So the first books that I'm going to mention obviously are going to be The Lord of the Rings. That's these three. I have the whole little movie box set. I got this from Goodwill. So uh, if you love The Hobbit, you have to continue on and read all of the Lord of the Rings books. I will say the second book, The Two Towers, is my absolute favorite. But The Hobbit is my number one favorite, then The Two Towers. That's the order I'm going in. Anyway, you definitely have to read the whole series. The next one is an absolute must also. If you love fantasy, you have to read the entire Narnia series. Again, this is the movie cover. I don't know why we have the movie cover. I guess because I buy my books used and I get whatever they have. But this is the whole um, series. So there's lots of books in this. The very first book, The Magician's Nephew, that's my favorite. And then Narnia after that. What a fun world that C.S. Lewis created. I wish I had read this series when I was a kid. I think I would have loved it even more, but I read them as an adult, still loved it. They are fantastic. You have to read these. My next choice is the Grimm's fairy tales. The actual fairy tales are really nothing like the Walt Disney movies, the depictions of the fairy tales. They are very different. Um, they are very watered down for Disney. The original fairy tales are very dark, very creepy, and I think they give similar vibes to The Hobbits because The Hobbits scared me as a kid. Uh, I watched the movie. I think the movie came out in the late 70s. I watched that movie when I was really little and it really freaked me out. <laughs> Just the drawing style alone, the, the animation style scared me, but then um, Gollum definitely freaked me out. So I think these fairy tales have the same kind of vibe as The Hobbit. Not exactly the same, but kinda. Gotta take a cider break. I got some apple cider yesterday and I got it in my little copper mug. So excited. I love cider so much. Hot, iced, it doesn't matter. I've got ice in this. The next one I'm going to mention is The Princess Bride by William Goldman. I'm just going to read the back because I have a hard time describing this. Like if I were to describe the movie, I don't know where I would start with it. So I'm just going to read a little bit from the back. It says, The Princess Bride is a timeless tale that pits country against country, good against evil, love against hate, this incredible journey and artfully rendered love story is peppered with strange beasties monstrous and gentle memorable surprises both terrible and sublime and such unforgettable characters as wesley the handsome farm boy who risks death and much more for the woman he loves and i just want to add that i have a stepdaughter she's 28 and she just had a baby september 1st and she named her baby wesley so I'm recommending this book <laughs> and I'm suggesting the never ending story. Look at this cover. Is this not glorious? This is so beautiful. The book is by Michael End and this is a, a translated book. I want to say it's German originally, but let me go ahead and read the back of this too, because again, this is a very hard one to describe. It says, Bastion Balthasar Bucks is shy, awkward, and certainly not heroic. His only escape is reading books. When Bastion happens upon an old book called The Never Ending Story, he's swept into a magical world of Fantastica. So much that he finds he has actually become a character in a story. And when he realizes that this mysteriously enchanted world is in great danger, he also discovers that he has been the one chosen to save it. So fantastic movie i actually haven't read the book but i've been dying to i put this on like my fall tbr every year and i never get to it but i'm really interested to see uh how similar the book and the movie are 
The next one involves mythical creatures also, and that is Stardust by Neil Gaiman. I did read this book uh, years ago. I really like the book, and there is also a movie for this as well. I didn't like the movie. The book was better. But let me go ahead and read the back of the book. It says, In the tranquil fields and meadows of long ago England, there is a small hamlet that has stood on a jute of granite for 600 years. Just to the east strands, a high stone wall for which the village is named. Here in the hamlet of Wall, young Tristan Thorne has lost his heart to a hauntingly beautiful Victoria Forester. And here, one crisp October eve, Tristan makes his love a promise. An impetuous vow that will send him through the only breach in the wall, across the pasture, and into the most exhilarating adventure of his life. I kind of want to reread this. I don't reread books often, but since it's set in October, I kind of want to read it in October. He does fantasy really well, and I'm not the biggest fantasy reader. Although I would like to change that. So, yeah, I really recommend Stardust. All right, we are switching over to fantasy fantasy, like deep fantasy right now. And I've read both of these. So that's exciting because, like I just said, I'm not the biggest fantasy reader, but I read both of these on um, the recommendation from my husband. These are two of his favorite books, and he forced me to read them, but I ended up enjoying them. So um, the first one is The Eye of the World. This is book one in the Wheel of Time series by Robert Jordan. I have only read book one. Uh, but the series is really long. I think there's maybe 12 books, 12, 13 books. He's read the whole series multiple times, like four times through. It's kind of crazy. This one does not have a whole lot on the back. It has like one sentence and I read it years ago, so I don't remember all the details. But I remember it was kind of like a medieval fantasy setting and there was a village and like these creatures were coming to invade the village. That's what I really remember from this. It definitely has Middle Earth vibes with like the different realms and the different creatures. The only thing it says on the back of this is the wheel of time turns and ages come and pass. What was, what will be, and what is may yet fall under the shadow. Let, let the dragon ride again on the winds of time. So dragons too. <laughs> I don't remember a dragon. I do remember bad creatures, but I don't remember a dragon. Anyway, I should probably reread this one too someday and maybe continue on with the series. Uh, I probably would like it. Next one is The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. And I read this one a year or two ago, so not that long ago. This one kind of gives a little bit of Harry Potter vibes because it involves a magic school. But it is so much more than that. It is very character driven. Let me read what this one says. I have stolen princesses back from sleeping borrow kings. I burned down the town of Treeborn. I have spent the night with Felorian and left with both my sanity and my life. I was expelled from the university at a younger age than most people are allowed in. I tread past by moonlight that others fear to speak of during day. I have talked to gods, loved women, and written songs that made the minstrels weep. This was a lot of fun. I really did enjoy this and I really need to read book two because I think I would like it just as much. Then we got a historical classic, The Once and Future King by T.H. White. Again, I really love this cover. It has the unicorn. Here's what this one says. The whole world knows and loves this book. It is a magical epic of King Arthur and his shining Camelot, of Merlin and Al and Guinevere, of beasts who talk and men who fly, of wizardry and war. It is a book of all things lost and wonderful and sad. It is the fantasy masterpiece by which all others are judged. I love magical creatures. I think that's why I liked the Lord of the Rings books so much. Um, I like the goblins and the orcs and the elves, all that kind of stuff I really enjoy. So if it's fantasy, I really want to have ma magical creatures in it. I haven't read this book. I did watch um, The Sword in the Stone by Disney, but I'm assuming that is very different than this. This one came highly recommended on a bunch of lists that I saw for The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. So check it out. We got another historical classic, and that is Robin Hood. Robin Hood I'm going with because of the setting in the woods and kind of, it's not really good versus evil like on a fantasy scale. It is not fantasy, but it is definitely good people fighting bad people and just the vibes and the setting of this and being British reminds me very much of 
the flavor of the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. There aren't mythical creatures in this either, though. This one is very light on the recommendation scale, but I still think it would be a really good choice. And fun fact, uh, I did my ancestry a few years ago and my ancestors were Quakers and Quakers apparently kept really good records of their ancestry. So I was able to um, track my line very far back and I got all the way to evil King John. <laughs> he was a real person in history. But I just love that. I thought that was hilarious when I was like working my way up the line and I got to King John and I was like, wait a minute, the King John, the evil King John, not the brother, not um, Richard the Lionhearted. I'm, I'm from evil John's line. And a book that is related to that is this series, King Raven by Stephen R. Lawhead. Stephen R. Lawhead is one of my all-time favorite authors. Absolutely love him. Um, but this is his take on Robin Hood. And, and look at this. Look at this size difference between these two <laughs> books. He added a lot to the story. So this is a bind up of his complete trilogy and it is Hood, Scarlet, and Tuck. I want to say that this series has fantasy elements in it. He added fantasy to the regular Robin Hood story. I haven't read these books yet, but I am dying to get to this. This is another one that I put on my TBR like every fall because I just feel like this would be a very fall type of story. Like anything in the woods and forest reminds me of fall. So I desperately want to read this and I think that this would be a good option. Okay, and the last book that I'm going to talk about isn't really a book book, but it is a cookbook. This is Recipes from the World of Tolkien. Uh, I got this a few years ago for Christmas, and I love this book. I love cookbooks in general, but look at the artwork in here. Isn't that so pretty? I want to live there so bad. It has lots of really pretty illustrations in here. Um, this is just a really nice book to have. If you are a fan of The Hobbit or Lord of the Rings, you definitely have to add this book to your collection. Uh, some of the recipes that I have marked in here that I really want to make. Oh, this one. I was considering making this one for my birthday. It is Bilbo's 111st birthday cake. So I'm not sure if I'm going to make it this year or not, but one year I definitely want to make this for my birthday. It sounded really interesting because one of the ingredients in it is ground rice. So I'm wondering what that would be like in a birthday cake. I've never put rice in a cake before. Another one I thought would be really fun is this one. And look at this artwork in here. It is for orc drought. I really love beer. I love beer and mead and all that kind of stuff. Especially like if I go to the Renaissance Fair, I'll get that big um, tankard <laughs> full of mead and walk around slushing my tankard. So I thought this would be a lot of fun to try and it sounds really tasty. It has like um, cider and whiskey and orange juice and honey and cinnamon sticks. This sounds so perfect for fall. Maybe I'll make this for my birthday. It would be easier than baking a cake. <laughs> okay, guys, those are all of my recommendations. Let me know if you agree, disagree, if you have more that you would add to this list. I would love to know that. Do any of you have any plans for Hobbit Day or for the first day of fall? Are you doing anything special? I am going to a chicken swap on Saturday the 21st, so that'll be really interesting. It's like a chicken farm swap where you can go and buy farm animals. So we'll see about that. And then on Sunday, my birthday, I don't really know what I'm doing. But anyway, uh, I hope you all have a great hobby day, first day of autumn, uh, all the things, a great weekend. And I will see you all soon. Bye.